this episode, we're going to be talking about implementing Tailwind CSS in Rails 6, and we're going to be using specifically Tailwind CSS version 1.0. This is going to be coming out just in a very short while, and so will Rails 6. And so I wanted to give you a walkthrough of how you set this up in the latest version of Webpacker, which recently got released as version 4, and made some great improvements so that it's easier to use JavaScript libraries and set them up, because we can just follow their Webpack instructions pretty closely now without having to make weird modifications to handle like the YAML formats that we used to have. So this is gonna be pretty awesome, but let's take a look first at our Rails application and how Webpacker is set up so you can have a good understanding of this before we dive in. So if we take a look at our code, we're gonna see that app assets JavaScripts is no longer there. It doesn't get generated in a new Rails app anymore. And we instead get app JavaScript. So inside of there, we'll have a packs folder and these are gonna be the separate JavaScript packs that will be compiled um, for your application. So I have application.js open right here. And this stuff at the top is what is generated by default. We have the same JavaScript includes as you used to have in the asset pipeline. We have Rails, UGS, Turbolinks, Active Storage, and um, Channels is actually uh, Action Cable, so any of those WebSocket channels will be defined there. And this is actually requiring the Channels folder and then the index.js, and uh, that takes care of importing all of your channels for you. So that's pretty cool and is set up for you. We also have this controllers line that I added additionally for stimulus. If you run Rails Webpacker install stimulus, so if you ran this in your command line, you're gonna get that uh, set up in there for you and that will generate this folder and have the index which will load any controller files in this folder, so that's pretty cool. And we also did a quick example in the last episode on how to set up Flat Picker and include its CSS from the JavaScript node module in your Rails app. So that was pretty cool. Take a look at that episode if you wanna see how all of that works. And I go more in depth on the new Webpacker setup as well. So namely, one of the most important things, especially for Tailwind, is that our post CSS config is no longer a YAML file, it's actually a post CSS config.js file. Same thing with our Babel, we can now write just JavaScript in there as the Node and JavaScript developers are used to doing. So when you see instructions, they usually assume that this file is a JavaScript file, not a YAML file, and this change is gonna make it so much easier for us to go add functionality in because we can follow the directions from any Node module's instructions. So let's go and dive into adding Tailwind CSS to our Rails app. So the instructions for Tailwind CSS for version 1.0 are pretty straightforward. We've got three things we need to do. We need to install Tailwind CSS, we need to set up a style sheet, and then we need to go ahead and configure post CSS through Webpack to actually process our CSS files with Tailwind. So that's it, and let's dive in. Um, let's go and run yarn add Tailwind CSS in our terminal. If you want to install Tailwind CSS 1.0 currently, there's only beta 4 out right now, so if you did this, you would get 0.7.4, which wouldn't be the latest version. So because it is unreleased yet, we can say Tailwind CSS at next to grab that latest version. And I will show you that right here. If we go to Tailwind CSS on NPM JS, this under versions is gonna show how to grab the latest version. By default, it will install the latest version. And then if you use that at next tag, it will install beta uh, 0.4. And so when version one officially comes out, that will become the latest version and you won't need to specify that at next anymore. So keep that in mind um, when you're watching this. In the future, Tailwind CSS 1.0 will be out or 1.1 and so on. So we're gonna run this and just make sure that we get the right version printed out here after it finishes installing, and we do, and that's great. So now we know that that's set up correctly, and we can go on to the next step, which is creating a CSS style sheet um, that uses Tailwind. Now, by default, it uses that at Tailwind directive, 
But there's also a note down here that says if you're using Post CSS import, use our imports instead of Tailwind Directive to avoid issues when importing any of your own additional files. Now, I haven't used uh, Tailwind CSS 1.0 very much personally, so we're gonna grab this version of the style sheet because if we open up our yarn.lock, you'll see that one of the dependencies of Webpacker 4.0 is actually CSS import. So we're gonna assume that that actually applies to us and use this version of the style sheet, but you might just be fine using the other one as well. Uh, but I assume this note here is kind of important, so we're gonna use that version instead. So let's go ahead and make a directory inside of app JavaScript, and we'll call it style sheets. And we'll open up a file in there called app JavaScript style sheets application dot scss and paste in that tailwind um, settings for that or the default styles. So then this file on its own is not going to do anything at all. We need to import that from our application JS. So I'm going to drop this in right here and we're just going to require style sheets slash application.scss. And that's gonna make sure it imports our style sheet uh, from the style sheets folder that we just created, and it will give us access to that in our browser. Now, one of the things that we did in a previous episode when we set up Flat Picker was we actually modified our layout. So our layout application.htmlerb has a new line in it. So by default, it looks like this. And what we did was we copied style sheet link tag and changed it to style sheet pack tag. So the link tag is going to load the asset pipeline style sheets. The style sheet pack tag is going to load the style sheets from Webpacker. So that's gonna be really important to make sure that you have, otherwise you're not gonna see any of your Tailwind CSS even if it does compile correctly. So that is important to make sure that you have in your head tag in your layout. And our very last step now that we have our style sheet is we wanna to go to the process your CSS with Tailwind section and look for the Webpack instructions. And so right here we can find that. And this is gonna be so much easier now that we have a post CSS config as a JS file. We can literally just grab these two lines that it wants you to add and drop them in. And so we can do that by grabbing this file and we'll just drop them in right here at the top and save the file. And one of the best ways to test this out is just to run bin webpack yourself. This will trigger webpack to co-compile all of your CSS in JavaScript and you should see that this does not fail and if that succeeds, then you should be good to go. And you'll be able to see here the stuff that it outputs and all of that. So you see this application JS, the map and the manifest.json and so on. Um, you'll also see these other things like, okay, it's definitely loading the style sheets application.css and it has built that and so on. So that's good. And now if we refresh in our browser, we should see that we see the new fonts um, from Tailwind CSS, which is good. And if we go to grab one of their examples, like let's grab a nav bar and paste that into our layout, just to make sure that it works, we can go into layout application HTML ERB, and above our yield, we'll paste in that nav bar and tap it over. And if we refresh our page now, we should see that we get our Tailwind CSS nav bar and it matches in the nav bar that we see in their example. So we definitely have Tailwind CSS now working and it's all being processed through Webpack, which is awesome and gives us a very easy way to go and style and do custom designs that can be a bit hard to do with Bootstrap. So in the future, we're gonna talk about implementing Bootstrap through Webpacker, but this is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.